Thinking about converting to Catholicism or Orthodoxy as a Protestant? Take a quick pause and read these short five books. I, I promise, like, I don't think any of them are more than 200 pages before you do so. Okay, in this video, as I said, I'm going to go through five books that I think if you're a Protestant considering conversion to Catholicism or Orthodoxy, you should read first. Now, why am I making this video? The reason for this isn't to that I think it's a terrible thing for Protestants to become Catholic or Orthodox. Plenty of people have done so from watching my own videos, and it's really not something I lose sleep over. I could talk more about why that is in a moment or in a different video, but the reason I want people to do this is that I just want people to be fair to the traditions they're coming to, because what I often see happen is that people become really interested in Catholicism or Orthodoxy, and all of a sudden they start reading a ton of books. And what tends to happen is that they read the very best Catholic and Orthodox theology. You know, I'm talking the, the greatest minds of those traditions, and they compare them to their like non-denominational pastor down the street or their Baptist church in, you know, down the street. And of course, like, you know, Pastor Bob and Aquinas is not going to be a fair fight, right? Like, Pastor Bob is always going to lose, even if he had the right conclusions, because Aquinas is just a better thinker. No offense, Pastor Bob, I'm sure he's a great guy, right? And so I think something that people should do before making a really huge life decision is to read some of the best of Protestantism as well. Now, I've heard people talk about this, and the problem is that they then recommend these tomes, right? Like, read Chemnitz Examination of the Council of Trent, read the Institutes, read, like, the complete works uh, of Luther. Before. Like, and it's, it's just not realistic, right? Like, people are feeling the pull to these traditions, and they, they feel like I mean, perhaps God is guiding them, and that direction. Or they're just really interested in this. And to tell them to go read these massive books, it's just not practical and people aren't going to do it. So I want to recommend five books that honestly are really short reads, but that should give you a really good sampling of what I think is some of the best of Protestant theology. These are in no order for the record, but they are all books that I have read and can personally recommend. And again, they are all really short books. So the first one is Apology of uh, the Church of England by John Jewell. Now, this is kind of a it's a very polemical work. And so three of these books are going to be Reformation sources, two are going to be later sources. And you, we have to bear in mind that things from the Reformation do tend to have a polemical tone, which might lead to kind of not the best argumentation at times. But I think reading some of these works does give you a sense of what the Reformers felt they were up against, why there was a Protestant Reformation in the first place, and why they thought their churches were justified. That's what John Jewell's book is all about. And I think it's a really good read, and it's a really quick read. I think you'll really enjoy it if you have any interest in Anglicanism or you just kind of want to get a good Protestant source, that is one to read for sure. The second is Luther's Freedom of a Christian. Now, this is a classic work by Luther. I read it uh, for the second time just the other week, and it's a really forceful book. It's a really... Uh, it's a great book of Luther where he's just kind of, Luther is a man who writes with his heart on his sleeve and he just goes for it. And you have to kind of love someone who says what they mean and means what they say. And, you know, for better or worse, Luther is that kind of guy. You might not like him, you might not agree with him, but there's a reason he was such a charismatic figure that caused such a big change in human history, really, in uh, the history of the church for sure. And I think many people would say that Freedom of a Christian is one of kind of the seminal works of Luther. Again, it's a really short read and he's getting all into what he sees as the heart of the gospel. And he's getting into questions of justification. It's where we get kind of some of those famous images of the uh, beautiful exchange that he sees happening between Christ and the bride, uh, the bride who brings nothing, the Christ, uh, Christ who gives everything to the bride, right? And you get to see what what it means for him to have this justification by faith alone. Again, whether you agree with it or not, you'll get it straight from the source, straight from the man who started the Reformation. Okay, to round out our Reformation sources, I want to give one from Calvin. Now, this one might seem a little bit of an off-the-wall recommendation. Again, I mean, I'd love to say read the Institutes, and I honestly think the Institutes are a great read. Uh, I've read through them, took a class on Calvin and had to do so, and I was really impressed. You know, I didn't identify as a Calvinist at the time, and I still don't, um, but you you can walk away disagreeing with him, but you won't walk away thinking Calvin is just dumb. Uh, and you certainly won't think that Calvin is just this angry person who delights in the wrath of God. Like, it's brimming with uh, just the beauty of God, actually, and how wonderful he sees uh, the gospel to be. And um, I, I think it's a really good work and, you know, you should read it. But again, it's not that practical to tell you right now, sit down and read the Institutes. So I'm going to give you the recommendation of Calvin's letter to Cardinal Sadaletto. Deep 
cut there. But the reason for this is that what's basically happening in this letter is that Cardinal Sadoletto has written uh, to the, the church in Geneva, uh, Calvin's church, and basically tell is telling them to come back to the fold, come back to Rome. And he gives them kind of some arguments for that. And Calvin then writes to Cardinal Sadoletto and says, actually, let me tell you what I think, why they shouldn't do so, and why our church is justified, why our theology is good. The great thing is, I mean, you can read this online for free. There's print editions of it as well. And it's, again, not a long read, but lets you get to the heart of Calvin's theology. And just as a little kind of like uh, scholarly tip might sound uh, pretentious, but one thing that's really good, uh, especially in history, but historical theology as well, is to read people's letters because you get kind of a different view of them than you would in their kind of, you know, magnum opus, right? You get something a little more off the cuff, but also a peek into who the people are, and it really helps you get grounded in context because, well, when people are writing letters, there's something that occasioned to this that we can more easily forget with a book. So Calvin's letter to Cardinal Sadoletto, really good read. I'd recommend it. Okay, now I'm going to get into two more modern sources. Um, again, these people have written a ton. There's other places you could go. Um, but here's, I think, where I would start with the two of them. So uh, book recommendation number four, it's going to be Karl Barth's Dogmatics and Outline. Now, depending on the tradition you come from within Protestantism, Karl Barth might be a bad guy to you. And he certainly uh, had some things going on in his personal life that uh, are, are really unfortunate that I think have marred his theology for some people, but he also is kind of a little uh, wishy-washy on his idea of uh, hell, and it's a bit unclear at times. And then you also have uh, some questions around his um, his doctrine of scripture. People wish he would have been more uh, of a champion for inerrancy rather than the kind of a approach that he does, did have. But all that being said, can't get around the fact that Karl Barth is a hugely influential the theologian. He's coming in at a time when modernism is really sweeping through the church, and he lays down his commentary on Romans as a clarion call for faithful Christianity and retrieving kind of Reformation doctrines, uh, specifically that of justification. And in his um, Dogmatics and Outline, which in case you're not familiar with the context, he wrote he wrote Church Dogmatics, which is a stupid amount of volumes. I can't think of how many off the top of my head. You're not going to read through them all. Dogmatics and Outline is essentially, well, the outline of his ideas. And so you get into some of the big ones. Recently did a video on the very opening of that book of Theology as a Science, which gets into really important questions right away because it gets to our approach to theology and is going to shape then how you see do downstream doctrines. Because if you take it that theology is somewhat provisional and somewhat uh, always kind of getting more and more formed that it almost kind of gets better with age in a way, well, then that's going to definitely shape how you think of different traditions and how you think of the act of doing theology. And so at least as one perspective on that, Karl Barth's Dogmatics and Outline is fantastic. Okay, last book recommendation of the day comes from uh, one of my favorite theologians and one of my favorite Protestant theologians, I think, if you're a Protestant that once is interested in theology, you should absolutely be reading this person. And that is Thomas F. Torrance, T.F. Torrance. Um, he was a theologian that was deeply interested in the early church um, and had a lot of really uh, pleasant engagement with the Eastern Orthodox Church and especially uh, George, uh, Father Georges Florovsky, I believe. Uh, that's his first name, Florovsky, uh, certainly is the last name there. They had great back and forth letters, not recommending the letters here, but what I do want to recommend, uh, and this was tough, but I'm going to go with the mediation of Christ. Here you're going to get his Christology, which is deeply tied to how he sees salvation happening, but also uh, for Torrance, his Christology is going to shape kind of his theological epistemology. So how do we know something? We know it according to its nature. And so how do we know God? We know God in Christ, and that's going to shape how we we do our theology and, and so on and so forth. And I think that book, again, I mean, I think it's like 140 pages, maybe. Uh, it's going to be a great introduction to his work. There's a lot of other places you could go. Uh, the Trinitarian Faith, that's going to be a longer work. Atonement, Incarnation, both great books. I mean, he's got a ton. But there you go. Those are five recommendations for books under 200 pages. So we're talking under a thousand pages. You can really do that. And I think if you're a Protestant considering Catholicism or Orthodoxy, well, I think you owe it to your tradition, the, the people that brought you up in that tradition, to um, all the good things that you've probably attained from it, to read some of the best thinkers from that tradition. Now, you are more than welcome to come away from that and say, yeah, these people are smart, they're bright, but I don't, I don't think they're right at the end of the day. I, I think Catholicism or Orthodoxy is true. 
by all means. I'm not trying to block people from that. I'm just trying to help people do that in the most informed way. And I think reading some of these works will be helpful for that. So I'd love to know what are your five books that you would recommend? Um, and maybe if you're Catholic or Orthodox, what books would you recommend to someone that wants to become Catholic or Orthodox? Now, before we sign off, though, I, I do just want to say one thing about this. It would be easy from this video, um, or maybe from a lot of my videos, to, to conclude that the, the matter of becoming Catholic or Orthodox is simply a matter of getting enough information in your head, reading enough books, and essentially kind of getting the math problem right of lining up all of your sources and, you know, outputting the answer. I don't really think that's how it works, though. I think it's a more embodied experience. I think it's a more holistic experience. And it's going to be something that involves more than just your head. It's going to be your heart, your hands, your, your whole self is going to go into this. And so I don't want people to think from this that staying Protestant or choosing to become Catholic or Orthodox is really just a matter of reading enough books and reading the right books. It's not. It's more than that. Um, this, the Spirit is certainly at work in these things. Your context, your own life experience is all going into this. And so... I just don't want you to get the kind of the wrong picture from this, but certainly our head is part of it. And one of the best ways to think through these things is to read really great books. And well, it's easier than ever to do that now. Anyway, thanks and God bless.